Um, the last point, I'm, last point I'm going to make on this is the, uh, that Africans and Negroes are two different peoples. Um, you know, race and skin colour are really a red herring, okay? It's, it's, it's a, a kind of divisive lie that uh, has been put about, and I'm going to go into this a bit more in detail. You know, to, to separate people by perceived race is, is a distraction, okay? Um, so we all think that uh, all black people are the same, basically, but they're not. Africans and Negroes are different. They have a different skeletal structure, different skull shape. And, um, and one interesting thing is African people, real Africans, cannot grow hair like Negroes can. So African men cannot grow beards. All right? African women cannot grow afros. Right? It's, a, it's a, a very powerful thing. If you, if you see real African women, you, you'll see that they've always got very, very short hair. Because they literally they can't grow it. Um, very quickly, Adam was not the very first man. The Bible is only covering a period of, of time which is about 7,000 years, the last 7,000 years of, of Earth's history. It doesn't cover before that period. There were people before that period, and the, and the, the, the first verses of uh, the, the Bible actually tell you that if you, if you read it properly and you read it with the uh, translating the Paleo Hebrew, some of the words aren't translated quite correctly and, uh, and you know, gives you the impression that it's all um, happening contemporaneously, but it's not. It's, uh, it's actually um, there's a, like a gap period in between the first two verses. So the biblical Israelites were black. Um, it says that uh, Ham, uh, this is according to the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, uh, Ham was the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. They're separate people. Um, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, Canaanites. So it's telling you there that, uh, again, the, the Egyptians and what, were, what became the Africans were black people. Um, so going through the Bible, I'm not going to go through all of these, but uh, yeah, Joseph in the Bible was, uh, was so much like an Egyptian that his own brothers didn't recognise him. So obviously he looked like an Egyptian, so you know, the Israelites were black people. Moses was also an Israelite, but he was raised under the nose of Pharaoh, um, so you know, he'd kind of stand out if he was a, a white guy. Um, and uh, he was also mistaken as an Egyptian by the... Uh, the daughters of the uh, priest of Midian. And also Moses' sister, Miriam, was uh, turned white as a punishment. So there's, there's a lot more biblical references that, that tell you that the, the Israelites were actually black people. But uh, yeah, you can, you can like go through it in the Bible. And um, uh, the, through, throughout the, uh, the, what's called the Renaissance period, all of the uh, artwork was replaced throughout Europe. But uh, because Russia, um, well, it was a kind of insular society at that time, um, Renaissance didn't get to Russia. So um, you can go online and, uh, and search for Russian icons, and you'll find that everybody who was portrayed in the Bible um, were, were portrayed black. Um, and, uh, and yeah, after Renaissance, they were, all that uh, artwork was destroyed and replaced with, uh, with white nice versions. Um, but, you know, 500 years ago, prior to 500 years ago, this is how they were all, always depicted. And the last thing is that uh, this, this man is the uh, uh, ex-president of, uh, of Egypt. And um, he was quoted on television to say, um, we can't accept the Jews because they left here black but came, here, uh, came back white. So, and he literally said that on television. And, uh, yeah, he was murdered not long after that. So, yeah, in Psalms it tells you that, uh, um, <coughs> that all the nations were going to come against these people. Um, and they were going to make sure that uh, their name would be forgotten. And uh, they would forget who they are. And that's what's happened. And all these nations are confederate against them. These are all the nations that Esau mixed with. Because... Esau felt cheated of his birthright, yeah? the ancestral hatred has remained, yeah? even though he's been spread out across all these different nations. So 
when the Europeans came to get slaves, not a single African went into slavery. What happened was the slavers came for the Judeans, the Negroes, and it was the Africans who actually sold them into slavery. It was the Arabs and the Africans who sold them into slavery. Right? They didn't sell themselves into slavery. It was uh, the, the Africans were selling the outsiders, the ones who came in and were, were actually prospering in, in the wilderness of their land. So, um, so that dispels that, uh, that myth that Africans were selling each other into slavery. So um, on a similar note, who were the Spartans? Um, in uh, one of the books that were left out of the Bible, the Maccabees, uh, it tells you that the Spartans were, um, were brethren of the, of the Jews there, the, the Judites there. Um, there's a letter to the, Mas the Lacedaemonians, as they were called, um, saying, look, we're brothers, let's make a pact, and let's, uh, let's join together. So it's, it tells you right there that uh, the Spartans were actually black people as well. Um, so that film should have had uh, um, Denzel Washington playing the guy, so yeah. So, and who were the Trojans? Well, this was, this was quite amazing for me because I just happened to be reading the Iliad um, at one point and I was researching this. And as I was looking at the, uh, the genealogy chart in the, in the 1611 Bible, the names started to match up with what I was reading in the Iliad. So one of the sons, the great-great-grandsons of Judah was a guy called Dada. And... Uh, Again, it's in the Iliad that Darda or Dardanus was the, was the father of Eric Thonius, who was the father of King Tros, who founded Troy. So again, the Israelites were the Trojans. So the Trojans were black too. Uh, slaves also came from Europe. And this is, uh, this is the um, evidence of it. Obviously... Uh, evidence of this kind is kind of uh, scant, you can't find very much around. Um, but every now and again you, you find some bit of writing that uh, gives you clues. This is from Benjamin Franklin, 1751. And uh, he says, um, Why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, become a colony of aliens who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us um, instead of us anglifying them? and will never adopt our language or customs any more than they can acquire our complexion. Okay? Saying that they weren't black people. Um, says, which leads me to add one remark, the number of purely white people in the world is proportionally, proportionally very small. All of Africa is black or tawny, brown. Uh, Asia, chiefly tawny. America, exclusive of the newcomers, wholly so. And in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what, what we call a swarthy complexion. Swarthy means black. Um, as are the Germans also. Okay, so it's, um, he underlines the point, why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America? So, so literally, the Germans and, um, and most Europeans at that time, 1751, were black people. Yeah? History has been rewritten. So this is, uh, this is um, one of the journeys of, uh, of the people from, uh, from the, what's known as the Holy Land from uh, Israel right now. Uh, these are the people called the Iba. Again, very similar to the Ibo and the, and, uh, the Igbo uh, tribes in, in, in Africa. Because um, Iba comes from the, uh, the patriarch Eba, who was uh, um, where the name Hebrew comes from. Okay? So the Iba travelled across southern Europe and ended up in a place they named after themselves, the Iberian Peninsula. And when they were chased out of, the, uh, of, of that area by the barbarians, they founded another country called Hibernia. Again, they named it after themselves. Hibernia means land of the Hebrews. And some of them went on to colonise another country, um, well, Scotland. And the only name that um, survives is Hebrides. Okay. 
So the uh, Irish were originally black people. And uh, this is an illustration from a, um, a magazine, Harper's Weekly, from the 1800s. And it shows, it actually tells you in there, if I'd left the whole thing, it says, the Iberians were believed to originally be an African race. Okay? And you can see how you know, the Irish Iberians started off like this, mixed with these, and became, you know, this was kind of a, a uh, sort of midway transitional stage. But uh, if you look at the Iberian writing of the time, it's, ex it's almost exactly the same as the Paleo-Hebrew script, right? saying that uh, these guys came from um, Jerusalem, basically. Britain actually started through a black Hebrew Israelite who was a Trojan prince. Okay? His name was Brito. It's been anglicised to Brutus. And what happened was, after the fall of Troy, he set out with 300 ships um, off to find a, a mythical land in the west. Okay? He, um, it's not written there, but he, he actually went in, he landed in France at one point. He sailed up a, a French river and started fighting the French, the, the pre-French, I guess. Um, and him and his men basically fought their way all the way into, into the interior of France and realised that they were kind of cut off. They were a, his men were all kind of stuck in the middle of France, surrounded by their enemies, and thought, well, you know, we're not going to do very much here, so let's, let's leave. But obviously their, their mark is still there. Brittany. Yeah? In the, in the past... Um, Places got named after the people that were there. So Brittany, Bretagne, is, uh, is a mark that this man was there. What happened was uh, um, Brutus, Brito, um, landed in 1103 BC in Totnes, of all places. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Well, we get into that. <laughs> yeah, so what he, when he landed here, he found that the, the, the country was overrun with red-headed giants. Um, and uh, the king of the giants was called Albion and that's again places were named after the people so this, the, the country was called Albion um, so essentially Brito and his men killed all the giants apart from one Albion's brother called Gog Magog uh, and he left Gog Magog alive because one of um, Brito's men Corinius wanted to fight this 18-foot this giant. Right? So um, the giant was kind of nursed back to health, he had to be nursed back to health, so he could fight Corinius. And um, the, this epic battle occurred on Plymouth Hoe. And uh, what happened was Corinius ended up throwing Gog Magog over the, over the cliff onto the rocks. And the place was called Lam Go Mago, which means giant's leap. Okay, but now it's called uh, Plymouth Hoe. Um, so, Britannia, or um, Britannia was named after Brito, Brito or Brutus. Um, uh, Brito, in Hebrew, is basically something like holder of the covenant. Okay, um, Britannia means land of the covenant. This is the covenant between Abraham and the Most High, okay, the Creator. Um, specified in the Bible. Um, when Brutus founded his, his capital city, he called it Troyanova, New Troy. Okay? There's, a, there's a tribe um, near London called Trinovantes, which is telling you that these people live near New Troy. Um, and yeah, the Romans renamed it Londinium. So um, Brutus was part of the royal family. He descended from Judah. He was part of the real royal family. You know, the real royal family is descendant of King David. Um, so he was a direct uh, descendant of King David, um, part of the, uh, the Zara side of the family. Not Pharaohs. <clears throat> Sorry? Not Pharaohs, no. Pharaohs was the one that got the inheritance. Yeah, but, but Zara. still, Zara was part of the royal bloodline. I know, but yeah, but the the royal 
royal line. He's still he's yeah. still part of the royal line of, of Judah, but yeah, yeah, Pharez had the had the birthright. Yeah. But you'll see what happens is they they connect together in yeah, the yeah. end right. in the in a, in a bloodline. <laughs> So, yeah, the proof of this is in, in 4th Street in Totnes. Um, you can go right, right in the street. There's, uh, there's the Brutus Stone, which is uh, where he's said to have set, set foot um, in Totnes. Um, also, in, uh, in London, the Church of St. Swithin, there's a, a stone which uh, Brutus brought from Troy. And, uh, again, you can go to that church and see it. And I already mentioned about the uh, Trinovantes. Also, this is, a, this is a, a tapestry showing the epic battle between Corinius and the red-haired uh, red giant um, at Plymouth Hoe. So, um, Corinius, um, after his uh, epic battle, he was given Cornwall. And that's, uh, Cornwall was actually named after Corinius. Um, and, yeah, there were, up until, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was 1486, there were chalk drawings of um, two giants, or one giant and a smaller man. This was commemorating Corinius and uh, and Gog Magog. Um, and right here, this a new story saying that they want to recreate the uh, the chalk drawings on Plymouth Hoe. So, oh, and also in the Lord's Mayor's parade in London, they parade two giants, Gog and Magog. This is. Uh, corruption of uh, Gog, Magog and Corinius. So, as I said, Britain, or British, means land of the covenant. It's a Hebrew word. Um, so, and, and as I said, it's a covenant between the Hebrews and the Creator. Um, so, you know, are we keeping the covenant? Um, just a quick word about the Anglo-Saxons. Um, the word Saxon actually means um, sons of Isaac. Okay? Um, the Anglo-Saxons means the angelic sons of Isaac. The angelic sons, and there's been some confusion about this, the angelic sons are the ones that um, exhibited the fallen angel seed. So the, uh, the original Saxons were, were dark-skinned and the, the Anglo-Saxons were lighter-skinned. And I didn't actually mention this when I was talking about Greece, but this is the, uh, um, the modus operandi of this bloodline. Okay, what they would do is, when there was a population they wanted to conquer, they would infiltrate this, this population. They would sort of arrive in, in few numbers, and then some more and a few more, until they had enough power, and they would take over that population, become those people, and rewrite history so you don't know about those people. Okay? And, and the same thing happened in, in Germany, Saxony. Um, there was the original Saxons, and then this bloodline came in, took over, and they became the Anglo-Saxons. Um, so it kind of brings us to uh, King James, King James the uh, sixth and the, and the first. Um, he was a black man. Okay? <laughs> um, now you can go to the National Portrait Gallery and you'll see a white guy says, um, looking back at you but um, that, those portraits were um, basically re repainted okay? what couldn't be um, painted over were engravings and um, in the 1611 Bible there's an engraving of a black man um, he was, he was actually, again, an Israelite of the, uh, the royal house of Judah, descended from the Pharaoh's line, okay? Um, that what came in through France. Sorry? Yeah. Got that told you? <laughs> um, yeah, so he, he was the one who had the Bible translated as faithfully as possible at the time because um, it says in the foreword, actually, that uh, there were people, and he meant the Roman Catholic Church, who wanted to destroy the word of, of the Most High. And uh, he, he didn't want that to happen. So that's why he had the Bible translated. Um, he sat on the, the thrones of England, Scotland, um, Ireland, and, uh, and France, actually. 
um, and he unified um, them into one one kingdom. And I said, there's the bogus um, painting of James. Um, there's he's been smeared with uh, with allegations of homosexuality and uh, and sleeping with his mother, but they're all all baseless claims. Um, because how can you be homosexual and have nine children with, uh, with your wife? You have to have an awful lot of sex to get nine children, I think. So, yeah, more pictures, um, engravings of him. And here's, here's an engraving of, uh, of James and his wife, Anne of Denmark, with her, with her afro. <laughs> yeah. So, he reunited the tribes of, of Israel in England. Uh, the Union Jack means the reunification of Jacob. Okay? That's why under the, the, uh, the throne, the coronation throne, is the stone of scone, which is the stone of destiny, the stone of Jacob, the stone that Jacob rested his head on when he wrestled with an alien, um, alien. <laughs> wrestled, wrestled with an angel. <laughs> um, same thing, really. Um, so, so, yeah, that's why that stone is there, because this... This country is the New Jerusalem. You know, I probably wondered why that song Jerusalem comes from. Um, Guy Fawkes was actually um, an agent of the Roman Catholic Church, and he wasn't about trying to get rid of Parliament. He was trying to assassinate James. Yeah? Because uh, the Roman Catholic Church wanted to stop the Bible being translated. Probably, but, they, but the main aim was to kill James. Um, so this is, this is uh, James' grandson, um, Charles II. Okay, there's also a, a white nice version of him, but um, there were, one painting did survive, um, and it matches up with, uh, again, a, um, an engraving of, of Charles II. Um, and he was the last of the Stuart line. And uh, what happened was the, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, or let's put it, the, uh, the Ashkenazi bloodline, basically uh, finally succeeded in removing this, uh, this royal line off the throne. And they replaced it with an Ashkenazi um, German bloodline. So what happened to the, uh, the, the black peoples of the British Isles? Well, if you look... Closely, at, uh, I just want to draw your attention to uh, one of the definitions of Negro. Uh, number three, any person with some Negro ancestors. Okay, just keep that in mind. 